Good evening, everyone. So happy to be amongst you. And I, th I was embarrassed to say no to Huna M. Because he before before this one, he asked me like several times before, and I declined in a an easy way. <laughs> but this time I said no, no, no. He's a real guy, and he's a human in the first. <laughs> sure he is. Sure he is. Um, well, Kolosante Bim, today is a special day, Pope Kolos' feast, St. Pope Kolos. So, it's a special day for me too, uh, 31 years ago, this is the day I entered St. Michel Monastery. And the first day I went, thank you. I, I stayed in the monastery since, since that time. And the first time I came out of the monastery, uh, five, six years later I think, 2001, so th this was in 93, right? March 93, I entered the monastery. Around 2000, uh, 2001, it was my brother's wedding, and he was very close to me, so I, I, I asked Pope Shinoda, you know, if I can go and just uh, celebrate the wedding for him, and I did, and uh, it, was, it was a nice time. But uh, after that, <laughs> I got used to going out of the monastery. The first time going out of the monastery, uh, listening to the cars or people was very strange. It was a very strange feeling, but you get used to it. Anyway, so tonight we're talking about faithfulness uh, in the service. This is really an interesting uh, topic, and it will help you all in the service. These are 10 points that I'm going to talk about. And everything I'm talking about is in the scriptures. So what I want, to, want you to do, we'll go around. We're going to read the scriptures or the verses together. So if there's a mic, is this an extra one? So let's see, starting from which table? We'll start from the middle here, or this one, anyone. So whenever we, we, uh, we go to a, a, a verse, we want just around, we'll go around. So you say the first one and then we'll move on to the next and so forth. Uh, so it's a heavy topic, but I want you to concentrate uh, because you don't miss out. And if you want to write uh, anything down, please do so. It will help you in the future. First of all, with faithfulness or trustworthiness in, in God's service, it's like love. In order for you to love someone, you have to love her first. Yourself. Isn't that right? You have to like yourself. You have to enjoy yourself. If someone hates himself, he won't love, he won't understand how to love anyone else, right? <clears throat> and it's, it's not the type of love that you're in the mirror and say, oh, you look beautiful, Abuna. I love you, Abuna. It's not that type, okay? It's, it's a pure loving type. It's a type where I accept myself. I'm thankful for who I am. So faithfulness in your personal life, that's the first one. Okay? Faithfulness involves repentance. The perfection of your heart. And through perfecting your heart, you live a life of repentance. And as we know, we're moving uh, to Lent, it's a journey of repentance, so it's a good thing to work on your repentance from now, to live a life of fulfill, fulfillness. David said in Psalm 51.10, can the first person read it for us? Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Okay, very clean. You don't have to, so how do we do that? How do we clean your heart? Very important. Remember, repentance goes with what? Confession, right? Okay, that's what we always say. So what's the verse for the next verse? First John. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's right. See how clear it is. <laughs> when we confess our sins, he is faithful. God keeps his promises. And we have to keep our promises to him also. We have to be faithful in our confessions. So by repenting and confessing, you're faithful to yourself. You live a life of purity through your prayers, through your scripture readings, through your daily 
practice of, of, of the simple things that we do as, as, as servants or as uh, God's children. Second point. Faithfulness is well, one of God's characters, right? One of God's characters. So the verse is in Exodus 34, 6, someone read it. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Steadfast love and faithfulness, one of his characters. And as I said, he kept the covenant with his people and we should keep the commandments of his. And this will help us to have the character or the virtue of faithfulness. Uh, also in Deuteronomy 7, 9, can someone read it? Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Very clear. If you don't keep the commandments, what happens? You're disagreeing with God's covenant. I mean, we're not, <laughs> we're not following his teachings. Number three, of course, faithfulness is what? Fruits of spirit. You know that? Galatians 5, we all know that. We have to be actively working in us. The fruits of the spirit. The fourth one is serving people. Then you're serving who? Christ, isn't that right? If you serve anyone, you're serving Christ himself. This is in Matthew 25, 45, so I'll read it. Then he will answer them saying, Surely I say to you, as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Any service you offer to anyone is serving God himself. Even the, the verse that says you give a cup of water to someone, then you're serving our Lord. Number five, as servants, you have to be what? Honest. Really important. Honesty. Another virtue. Someone read Luke um, chapter 16, 10 to 12. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And if you have not been faithful in what uh, is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Honesty to yourself being faithful and you're able to be honest with others remember that you're here today you might be a, a different person outside i don't know but what you hear now you should be the same outside not any difference we don't have two hats we don't have two faces so make sure that you you concentrate in that that you're honest and at least and god will bless you bless you with a lot more uh, six, we'll see the difference between a successful servant and an unsuccessful servant. For the successful servant, who do you think is the best in history with honesty? Hmm? Well, no, I mean like a person, not, not Christ. <laughs> St. Paul? No. <coughs> Even higher than that. St. Mary. St. Mary. St. Mary is a perfect servant. Uh, let's read Luke chapter 2, 18, 19. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She was so young when she brought forth our Lord. First thing she did once as she was pregnant and tired, when she heard her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant, what did she do? She left straight away. She went to, to her to serve her, to help her out. She was very faithful. She was faithful in keeping all the miracles and everything that they went through, even traveling in Egypt for those three and a half years. She saw a lot of things that no one can bear with the pain and sufferings. And, but a, a lot of miracles were, were there, and that, that's what comforted her also. She was a successful servant. 
Now, let's go to the unsuccessful servant, and uh, we hope that um, none of these are you. Uh, this is in Matthew chapter 23. You can sign read it. Verse 47. For they bind the heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all the works they do to be seen by men, they make their flee terrace broad, um, broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at feast, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplace, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Who are these? Who are they, who are they talking about? Pharisees. Pharisees. Well, believe it or not, we have Pharisees in our churches too, so it's not really far from that. That's really sad and it's really hurtful, but you just have to be careful. It's not one of you. In service, you're serving others. Whatever you say, beware, because the person in front of you, especially younger people, they can be affected. So if you bear a burden, on all of these children or kids and you can't do it yourself then you shouldn't be telling them to do it an example of this is fasting if the child can't fast for any reason then he shouldn't be fasting the way you want him to fast and sometimes we're a bit lenient in fastings in, in our fasting so just be careful with that don't burden people with anything if you're a showy person In service then be careful of that too because you might you know hurt someone by your pride by your ego and what you do can affect the kids or if you do things in secret if you go to places that you should be going to trust me these kids have eyes and they can see you believe it or not we've seen this a lot they can see you in a situation that, you, as a servant, you shouldn't be doing. We see this a lot in our wedding receptions. They're deacons and praying in church and all these alhan and, you know, best deacons you have in church. Then what do they do in, uh, in the receptions? They go and sing all, sing all these Arabic songs in the weddings. And they know it off by heart, believe it or not. <laughs> Sure, they're enjoying themselves, that, that's fine, but it's extreme. Because in, it, sometimes in, in church I say, oh, we don't know Arabic, but they, they know Arabic songs. <laughs> they know how to dance too. Uh, I don't know. I've been to some of these receptions, <laughs> and I'm surprised. They have talent, actually. <laughs> I'm not sure he came and uh, said this about uh, faithfulness. The priest or servant who loves to show off himself or his service brings joy to the heart of Satan. Brings joy to the heart of Satan. It's really important that as we speak or we preach or we serve, it's not our own words, but it's the words that are from the Bible, the scripture. Someone read for us uh, uh, verse 13, please. We're still in Matthew. Verse 13. But woe. Yeah. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Okay, so just be careful. Some of us will teach things that are not in the scriptures, and we don't know what we're saying, and it can affect uh, the people we serve. St. Paul also instructs his young Timothy uh, with the right teachings in 2 Timothy 2, uh, 1 to 3. Can someone read this, please? You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men 
who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure a hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And the following, if you do, Song of Solomon, 1 8. If you do not know, O fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's tent. Okay. Feeding the goats, feeding the sheep with the right message. Our teachings come from the early fathers. Athanasius, Basilius, Jerome, Oregon, Maris Hat, all these early fathers, they taught us well. And these are the things that you should be reading and teaching from. Perhaps you know the sermons, since we were young, we used to listen to them, full of beautiful teachings. And of course, the Bible itself, the scriptures. Don't take your teachings from Facebook or social media. They will give you the wrong message. The honest servant who keeps the commandments has justice, mercy, and faith. And we can read this in verse 23. Woe to you. Woe to you, scribes and, and Pharisees, by hypocrites. For you play tithe. You play tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the, the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. And these you ought to have done without leaving the others under them. Okay, so that's, I know it's a bit difficult this verse, but an honest servant keeps the commandments in justice, mercy, and faith. Our seventh point is faithfulness in service. And we're going to talk about teaching. St. Paul said to Timothy what to do when he went out to preach and serve. This is 2 Timothy 3, 14-7. Can someone read it? But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and from that childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, so the question I ask you is where do you bring, or where do you get your teachings from? The scriptures, from the fathers of the church, from other servants, okay? So, as humans, sometimes we could say something that's it's a bit erroneous, and we might not notice it. But now with the recordings, we can pick it up. So don't pick on someone if they said something out of context. Sure, you can go up to him and say, oh, you said this, is that right? And then uh, he could have said it in a, in, a, in a wrong way, but he didn't mean it that way. So sometimes we take out out of context what we say. So before teaching uh, your lessons in Sunday school, does someone revise them, Abuna? Or? Yeah, yeah, good, okay. Because that's what they, we did in Australia. We used to give our, our lessons to our head uh, servant, and he would revise. Good, wonderful, okay. I don't think we do this in St. Mary's, so uh, they should be doing it. I don't know why. But it is a lot of work. Of course, it, I know, I know. Yes, you have to be faithful in, 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 in doing this. So that's good. Thank God your church does that. Um, it's really important that you uh, let someone advise it. Because we hear a lot of funny things sometimes our kids say. Uh, you have to be actively studying the scriptures all the time and renewing your mind so you're able to give because whatever you're able to, to take in, feed yourself, you're able to give to others. But if you're stagnant, you're not doing that, then you just have that knowledge that you have and, and you're not improving. So it's really important that you keep studying the, the scriptures. Um, St. Paul continues in, in verse 16 and 17. Can someone read that? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for institute is instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, for truly equipped for every good work. I don't want you to teach to please others, to please other men, and this is what he's, he's saying here. You're teaching to benefit yourself and to benefit others, but not to please others. So be careful of that. What would you profit if you're trying to please a person in front of you and there's no benefit for him or for you? The world changes around us, but we still teach Christ teaching. Nothing in this world. And you can see what's happening around us now with all this problem with same sex and marriages and the uh, what the children are going through at schools, um, the OPG and, and all that. It's, it's really, really sad and really disgusting. Um, the Holy Synod actually took, I don't know if you heard, you heard about it? About the Catholic Church? Oh, okay. okay. That's good. We're proud, we're proud, but be careful. You know, the Catholic Church and the other people are gonna, if they know you're Coptic, they'll no. They have already on social media. Oh, okay. Well, we're a persecuted church always. So, just uh, but we're strong, and I'm sure there's a lot of conservative people who will uh, who will be with us in this. Um, but we have to stick to the Bible. We don't we don't follow these teachings. If you're not following the right teachings, then you're not from Christ. And you're not Christ's servant. Uh, someone read for us the next one, Galatians 1, 8 to 10. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bound servant of Christ. Okay, so it's clear. We just talked about it. These people are pleasing men, they're pleasing others. These, these community, they're pleasing them. But we don't have that. St. Paul strictly says, don't please them. Follow the teachings. So this verse is very important for what's happening now. Our teaching is passed down from our Lord to St. Paul to his son Timothy. Your teachings, again, from the Bible, from the church, from your fathers, from your servants, to your children. This chain should not be cut or changed in any way. We don't get it from any, any other source. It's really important that you do that. Remember that Timothy was in his teens, he was very young, and for the Young servants who say, I'm too young to serve. No, you're not. The Virgin Mary gave birth to Christ at the age of 13, 14. So she was, she was very young. She was responsible servant. So you should have a lot more younger kids serving uh, in the church also. Not too young to serve. Keep in mind the ministry or service is a sacred trust to be obeyed. We entrust you with the future kids. You're not doing voluntary work, really. It's hard work. It's a lot of work for you. You're not just doing it because you're in there to do it. No. It's a big responsibility. Don't think it's easy while you're going through serving. The ministry has casualties. I think you all know that. Some of us might not, any, we can sometimes fight, we shouldn't, we have confrontations, so it's not really smooth. But of course the devil has to interfere, and we know that. That's why we have to stay firm, stay faithful, and, and let go sometimes. You know, Buna sees this a lot. The ministry involves unpleasant tasks at some time, in anything you do in church, you just say, why me? No. 
If it's given to you, take it as a blessing and move on, whatever it is. And sometimes, unfortunately, the ministry or the service that you do is a burnout. Could be from, the, from, the, from all the service that you have, we like doing that, the fathers. If I find a successful person who knows how to you know, serve, then I'll put more pressure on him. But sometimes we burn that person out. So be careful of that. Because if you're most of the time you're in church, you're not serving your own house, your spouse could be upset. Your children also. So if you're in that dilemma, you know, I'm sure Buddha knows if there is anyone like that. Just be careful that if you're burning yourself out, too much service, Abuna, you, know, you can give it to someone else. <laughs> so this is part of our uh, not neglecting our homes as part of your faithfulness and service. Um, in our wrong teachings, sometimes we, unfortunately, we can teach because I want to show myself. That's, that's a, wrong, a wrong way of going about it. Or because of my, my greed, unfortunately. Um, sometimes we have corrupt minds and we just want to do something that's different. But, and we want to make ourselves godly for gain. So, this is all in the next verse. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. Can someone read it, please? If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent, consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdrawers. How can we, we be faithful in our service to God? This is number eight. We have to be living sacrifices to God in order to do that. Don't live a life that's not yours. What do I mean by that? I want you to be yourself. You entered the service as that person that unique character you are. Don't change to be someone else. Because you get hurt at the end. Like, I want to be like a Bono Brown. Of course, that, that's something good. But you're not him. It's different. You're yourself. You're unique in your way. Sure, take the good traits of the Buddha, that's fine. But be yourself. I remember when I went to the monastery, the same Bishoy. You know, we have different ideas and, and it's, it's a different world for me because I went to Australia when I was three years. So, going to Egypt, going to the monastery, different lifestyle, different atmosphere, everything is just different. So it took me two years to get used to it. But during that journey, I wanted to be a holy man, a saint. It didn't work out. <laughs> I wanted to be someone <laughs> that, that wasn't me. And then I realized I should just be myself. I entered the monastery as who I am now, and I'm still the same person. I haven't changed. But you work on your spiritual time on the spiritual side. So be yourself. Don't be someone else. Take good examples of others and work on it, but not the character, because you're all special. Because our aim is to serve others in God's kingdom. Now, Romans 12 is an interesting chapter. And if you read it, you'll understand it talks about what we do, the faithful, what we talk about now. So can someone start reading? I beseech you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed by, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be proof what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, be, to think, but to think soberly as God, 
has dealt to each one a measure of love. That's, that's uh, very clear. Be forward. Talking about different types of gifts, you all serve in a different way, different people. Sunday school, youth meetings, outreaching. Okay, so we've been talking for half an hour. I don't like talking a lot, so I'm gonna talk for <laughs> I'm gonna talk for another few minutes, and then we can. Anna's here. Anna, thank you so much. Anna, no, 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 no. Just just and because we lose concentration, but they, could have. <laughs> they don't lose concentration. Haram. Abuni, we're just talking to them. It's too much. It's too much having two lectures. Why we're here? No, I'm not getting that at dinner. What are you talking about? Okay, someone let's re read the next one, the next verse. Uh, having been gifts. Having been gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. For prophecy, let us prophesy in mm. proportion to our faith. For ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gifts with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy, cheerfulness. We all have gifts. We all have talents. I'm just speaking now about this. Every one of you is blessed with a gift. You might know what your gift is. We're all different gifts, all different talents. So what are you doing with your gifts now, your talents? Are you burying her, putting in the ground and not using her? Or are you using your gifts to help others, to help yourself, to help your family, to help those you serve. And if you don't know who, what your gift is, maybe later on you will. Because you're special in that, and this is how God has created us. Invest in your gift. If you have that gift and you know what it is, work on it and invest in it. But what happens if you don't use your talent? That's the next one. What does it say, Matthew 25? For to everyone who has, to him will be given, and he who will have abundantly, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. So if you bury a gift, what's going to happen to your gift? It's going to be given to the person who has more. So make sure that you win more gifts over from those who are not using their gifts. God will give you more and bless you more. If you have a, a talent, and despise, this is uh, one of Troy Campbell's saying, if you have a talent and despise others, God will take it from you. If you have a gift and you're looking at someone else's gift or despise the other person, God will take it from you, unfortunately. Also another saying by one of Troy Campbell, the humble are the only ones capable of preserving the talent. One of the most important virtue is humility. If you're humble and you live in meekness, you'll be blessed. Being faithful in your service is being humble also. Number nine, Christ himself was faithful in his service. And we know, of course, John chapter 10, the Good Shepherd. Let's read it. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Does your sheep listen to you? Do they follow you? The kids, do you know them by name? Everyone in your class. And if not, why? Are you there for them, especially in the time of crisis? Same, Abun Abshoi Kema said, Love is the bond that connects the shepherd to his flock. How deep is your bond with them? 
each one of them. It's your shape, it's your flock. If you, if one is lost, would you go and follow that one? Would you send and leave the rest? What would you do? It's really important that you have that understanding that these kids look up to you and their life, their future life is dependent on what you do with them. We see this in also in John 17, 12. Jesus talks to God the Father about this. Can someone read it? While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Really important that you do like Christ did. That's his teaching. There's a scale of how we ought to serve, and this is in the entire chapter of Ezekiel 34. The responsible and irresponsible shepherd or servant. The words are very harsh, so try and, and, and take them uh, with understanding. Uh, so let's, let's read from verse uh, 1, chapter 34, Ezekiel. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. Who are you feeding? Are you feeding yourself? Are you feeding your own flock? Are you satisfying yourself? Are you satisfying the sheep? Instead of serving the child, you could be destroying them. Always be alert in what you say, what you do, because it affects the person in front of you. Verse 4, please. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away nor thought out what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. Remember, these kids are the future of the church. One of them could be monks, one of them could be a future priest, one of them could be a bishop, one of them could be the patriarch. Even your own children at home, treat them with honor, respect them, and they will respect you back. I remember in Sunday school, we had a servant who was uh, Sudanese, not black, but there's a lot of Sudanese that came um, serving in Australia. And we loved him so much. His name was Uncle Labib. He came, our, our Sunday school teacher was available, so he came and, and taught us. And he loved us so much. And uh, he didn't know English that well, so we made a lot of fun of him. I'm sure you get that in Sunday school. And so we were sitting in front, three of us. I was one of them. And each time he would say something, we'd make fun of him. And then we said, Mr. Yawin, Uskut, Lahsan Dik Kaf. Kaf meaning he'll hit us. Of course he doesn't, he won't hit us. We know he won't hit us. He never, never did. But we kept on making fun of him. He couldn't do the, the lesson, give the lesson. So he turned around and he hit the first three in front of him. And I was one of them. And he said that. He said, why do you make me do that? See what you made me do? One of you could be a monk, one of you could be a priest, one of you could be a bishop, you could be a priest and a, a pope. The other two are the two bishops. And he prophesied, so Abuna, Abuna has any right to, to take his blessing. <laughs> we can have nuns, who knows? <laughs> so that was really interesting. Homataban, the other two, it was only me and Amagiris were a bit, you know, shaggy. Poor Ambassador was much, but he was there, he was just there. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
be careful of no partiality serving your, your, in your service. If you're going to talk to someone, talk to everyone. If you're going to hug someone, hug everyone. If you're going to visit them, visit all your kids. If you're going to give gifts, give to everyone equal. If you're going to hang around with someone, hang around with all of them. If you're going to call someone, call them all. It's really important because they see how you react with the others. Be careful of that. Be faithful to all of them. All must be treated equally, <clears throat> just like Christ did. Some of you might ask, but he loved John more than anyone else. Is that true? Good, good. If you said no, then you understand. It's really the opposite. John loves him more than all the others. So he was, he was equal with everyone. Christ was equal with everyone. This is what we should be doing. And the more love we give to our Lord, the more he will love us back. So we can destroy kids without knowing. Okay. So what's the results? Can someone read this? So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all, mm -hmm. the beasts of the field, and they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains, and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. The last few words is very important. Our church, unfortunately, concentrates on people in the church, not outside the church. How many are lost in this world? that we don't know of. How many kids that come to Sunday school? We don't reach out to them. Although if we try, we can ask and, and find out the families that don't come. We only concentrate on what's inside. Um, we should work on this really, really important in our, in our church, is to reach out to others, to other kids, to other families. Those who are lost. They need us more than anyone else. Unfortunately, there's a real story that, that has happened and uh, he, the father learned his lesson where a parent concentrated more on his child to become a doctor. And whenever the servants went to bring the child to church, he would get rid of the servant and tell him, no, 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 he's busy now, he's studying now, there's no time for you. They went, they went like several times and the father was very, very um, rejectful. And the child didn't know that they were coming and asking about him. Of course, if they did, if he did, he would have maybe, I mean, they asked to see him, but no, he, he would close the door. and. and they couldn't see the child. Many, many years after studying, he became a doctor. Of course, he doesn't know the church. He knows of the church, but he doesn't know the church. And then he, like this young woman, his co-worker, another doctor, but unfortunately, she wasn't Christian. And uh, he continued his life with her. And the father, of course, what happened? came to the church, shouted, cried, and help me, my son is lost. What can you do about that? It's a real story. We see that a lot, unfortunately. So the parents sometimes, they need to be educated. This is what we do in churches sometimes, bring the parents and educate them. So if you have that problem, it's as much as you can is pray, as Abuna said, we pray about it. Let's look at verse 7. shepherds hear the word of the Lord as I live, say the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock mm -hmm. for the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock mm -hmm. continue therefore O shepherds therefore O shepherds Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, 
Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hands. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may no longer be food for them. Very scary, isn't it? So if you don't serve the sheep in a proper way, God will take over, and he will take care of them. And you will be, you will be hurt. He doesn't really need our services, really. He can look after his own. Let's go to verse 15. What will God do? I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, says the Lord. God will look after them. Can someone read verse 16? I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick, but I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. Because you have pushed aside with side and shoulder, butted all the weak, 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 weak weakness with, with, I can't speak, with weakness with your horns and scattered the, them. So this is this is you you you'll fear you'll find some weak children or weak kids in, in your in your class. I want you to concentrate on them because they're the ones that need healing, they're the ones that need your, your attention more. Sometimes we can spoil kids and, and we see this in, in 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 the deacons. We can spoil them by teaching them hymns and they love their voice and all that. And trust me, unfortunately, they get lost at the end because we give them that feeling of the wrong thing, we're spoiling them. So be careful of that. We see this a lot and they get lost. But of course, it's like a, it's like a balloon. The more you give them, the more it blows up and eventually it will, it will blow and, and we can't put it back together. So be careful of the weak. That you, you feed these kids and we don't lose them. Now, of course, St. Paul said, who is weak and I am not weak. So if you have a problem with a child in their home, then you need to go and, and help them. Um, there was a mother who had a 12-year-old kid who was singing, you know, just normal songs, and she told him, be quiet. You, you sound awful. What do you think the kid felt after that? Mm. The kid himself became psychologically sick and he wasn't normal after that. He wasn't, he wasn't speaking because he's afraid to say something or sing something and people make fun of him directly from his own mother. And of course, he had a problem there. So if you have children like this, they have something that uh, is not normal, there's usually a reason from home. It always starts from home. So try and find out what it is and work with them. Really important. Okay, so... Oh, I mean, we can talk about faithful people uh, Moses was very faithful to God. David was faithful. Well, I'm jumping now because of time. Joseph was amazingly faithful to himself and to his life and, and the people around him. In conclusion, I'll read this because until they find, they find it up here. For God is not unjust to forget your work and the labor of love which you have shown toward his name, that you have ministered to the saints, and do minister some diligence and, and we desire that each one of you show some diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise any little thing you do for any of you, these kids in service then God will not forget it. Any small thing, you're doing it for Him. 
And in Revelation 2.10, it says, Be faithful until the end. Be faithful until the end. And I will give you the crown of life. There's a reward at the end. But you have to be faithful until the last minute, the last judgment. And our standard of judgment is faithfulness. The reward is the crown. And glory be to God. Through the Amen. Um, so, all right, any, any questions? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity and it, we're in the depths of this topic. So, yep, let's get started with questions. And I wanna promise you to. <laughs> so he can answer the questions for you. And All right. Anyway. Abuna, um, Your Holiness said like... Um, your Reverence. We, Your Reverence. But let's call it, it's, it's, not, it's not our title. <laughs> is your Reverence said it? that um, when we teach the kids something about like, um, you know, fasting, for example, we should really carry the burdens ourselves first before we tell them. But, you know, we're... Even though we're servants, we also have our faults and you know sins, right? So even though I could be sinful on something, when I'm teaching the younger kids, I have to speak the truth and what the Bible has to do. How do I get the right balance when I'm not burdening them, but I'm also teaching what the Bible says in different things? But being honest, in what you're teaching. Even, even though, like, for example, this thing I'm not doing or I fail to do? Yeah, yeah, I know it's a different, it's a difficult equation, but... It's like um, when someone comes to us in, in the church before communion and it's, it's a fasting time and they say, well, no, I'm not fasting. So what we say, and can I take a minute? So what we say, I give you communion, but then fast. It's something like that. So if you know that you're going to say something that you can't do, but you have to say it, then say it and, and work on it yourself. I think that's the best thing, right? Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a, a practical thing to do. <laughs> Sometimes people do something and we say, wow, what great faith you have. This is really good. And, and we encourage them. So it depends how much you have. Um, you need to work on that. So if you, um, they're not, not all the same. There's a lot of work. It does, but it practically is different. If you, sometimes things happen in our life, and, and if we can't accept it, then it's sometimes it's the faith is, is a bit challenging. Here. Yeah, so it's really you have to really have strong faith to 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 be thankful, accepting everything. May I say something? Sorry. I want you to think of this faith as a. Talent. 
Okay, so yes, God gives everybody a different measure of faith. He said, what does that mean? Do you remember in the time of uh, the Mukattam Mount, His Holiness Pope, who? Ram, what number? find somebody who did So definitely, everybody has a different measure of faith. Now, does that mean God is discriminating? No. Does that mean we can't reach the heights of the faith? No. Because just like the parable of the talents, if you take that faith of yours, I have a tiny little bit, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm using it. I'm, I'm, I'm making it grow. It can reach to the higher levels. Okay, but it's the measure that's dealt, that's the first part. And then we give we give it the attention that it we should give it the attention it deserves to make it grow. Okay? But definitely that's Thank you for that bonus. Yes. To follow up on that. What about those who don't have faith? If God gives the measure of faith, what about those who don't have faith? Does that mean that God didn't give them faith? Or how does it work? Uh, St. Paul in Romans chapter 2 talks about the natural law. What is the natural law? What's the natural law? Give me just a simple understanding of the natural law in every human being. Conscience. Okay, conscience. Okay, what else? Longing for something bigger. Yes. Ecclesiastes 2.11 or 3.11. Can't remember. He says he has put what eternity in their hearts. So to say that God didn't, and then again another verse. See this? How you do it? You grab here and here and here. You put it together as a puzzle, and that's the faith. That's the teaching. So he also said that he desires that all come to the knowledge of the truth. Saint Saint Paul, right? He said, all God wishes, desires, God desires that all come to the knowledge of the truth. So in order for that knowledge, for that, that to happen, there has to be a faith. If you look at Romans chapter 1, when he's talking about the homosexuals, but before that, that starts in verse 21, from the beginning to maybe like, in, like up to around 20, Right? He says what? And even in the book of Psalms, the firmament declares the glory of God. Okay? So you can look in the book of Romans and it says that the, the Godhead, the Godhead can be known through nature. So I don't think it's correct to say that God doesn't give everybody the capacity, the ability to have faith. Where everybody is because first the natural law. Everybody knows murder is wrong. Well, where did that come from? The morality that God gave to everybody. Okay? And the idea that I can be I can feel good when I do something good. Okay? And I can feel bad when I do something bad. That's that's the natural law. You see? So it's just it's just that hey, it's shot in, the good one, the good Christian is the one who See somebody who doesn't have the faith and helps them. Because it's to our shame, this is what St. Paul said, it's to our shame that there are still people who don't have faith and we still have people who worship idols on the planet. Okay? Uh, yes, go ahead. Beth. Sure, just take the mic so everybody can hear you. So, um, one of the previously easier that previously atheist and, and now is a Christian. Um, he said one of the things that make us decline God is that it's been one cent right next to the other, next next to the other, and before we know it, like, we rejected the idea of God. So they actually exert efforts to say that there is no God. So it's the same effort that they could have done to that the agree God. that there is God. Yeah. Right? Like it's, I, I don't think God reveals himself to everyone. Um, 
even those who doesn't want it to know. So in uh, in first crunching uh, crunchings, uh, nine twenty to twenty four, um, and to the Jews I became as a Jew that I might win the Jews, to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might be by all means save some. So as a servant and as Christians, how we do learn these verses to become without law to the people without law and to the weak to become weak like them. The first thing just talks about weakness and weak. But I think you, you come to the level of, of that person, but be strong, Gary, not, 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 not to their weakness. But in order to serve them, you have to understand the person in front of you. So in order to, to lift that person up, you have to go to their level. But not weakness, as in weakness. To try to understand the person with his character, with his ability, then deal with him until he knows the face and the grow. And need a, a very experienced person how to deal with everyone with his level of personality, of understanding. I cannot give, for example, a chemistry to a little dog, boy, a, a big lesson in chemistry. I have to explain him something in his level, but this big chemistry lecture to one who is a chemist. You know, he can, will understand the same thing in everything. Start with a very little, like what we do in Sunday school. We give pre-K class, and we give high school and college class. I cannot explain what in high school is or college class to a pre-K class. And the reverse also will be difficult. If I said to a, a big, a high school boy and give him a lesson like a 3K, he will look to me. That's why St. Paul said, I try to understand everybody and give him explanation until he grows in his face and accept the peace. And to win, and he, at the end you said that, I try to do everything to win the more. And to have somebody more, yes. If I could just ask. He tried everything, but he said that I will win some. I cannot win them all. Yes, to win we, some. We do our best, but yes. we cannot win everybody. Just to add, you had asked for an example. Um, I think dinner is ready, right? Okay. Um, yeah, we, we need to go for dinner. Okay. Yes. Oh, and then we can continue after dinner. Okay. We are here for the only time we can solve. We've been with you for a long time. We thank you, our Lord, our Almighty God, for your great love to us. Every day, we reveal to us how to be faithful in our world. And we are sure that when we start to be faithful, your Holy Spirit is going to accompany us and give us to be faithful in everything. We ask our Lord to help us and to protect us and to give us this great faith that can move mountains. We ask our Lord to bless our gathering, to bless all your people here, to bless Abuna, to Abuna Ibrahim and every servant standing here through the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, St. Mary, the intercession of the Holy Mother, St. Nina, and all the same for all of us. Hear us when we pray and pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us day our day, and let us forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us those trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Thy will be done, Christ, and thy will be done. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.